What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about five tips for the Carver add-on that's built into Blender that you probably didn't know. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so remember, this add-on is built into Blender, so you need to go to Edit, Preferences, and look for the Carver add-on and make sure that that's enabled. All right, so number one, you can actually create your own custom keyboard shortcuts inside the Carver menu in your preferences by going down to keys and selecting one of these boxes and typing in a new value. So you can come in here and type in a value like this in order to set custom keyboard shortcuts. So second, you can turn off the apply in order to do live booleans. So if you do a shift control X in order to try to cut into this object right here, well, if you wanted to do that again, that could be problematic right? Because you want to have exactly the same size and drawing the exact same size rectangle is a little bit difficult. Well, what you can do instead is notice how down below there's an option for apply operations. I'm going to tap Q to turn that off. Now, when I draw this, notice what it's going to do is it's actually going to create a Boolean and it's going to set it up so that it's uh, actually showing up inside of your modifiers right here. Well, what that means is that means that now you can take this object, you can create an array of this object. So let's say that we wanted this to move in the Y direction. You can now use this in order to create multiple different copies of this object. In addition, notice how now I can move this around. So this is actually a live Boolean that we were able to create really quickly using Carver. Next, you can also use the 3D cursor to set the depth that this cuts. So let's say we were to find the center of the surface right here. Well, what we've done is we've set our 3D cursor by doing a shift right click in order to set that location. All right, so once I set my 3D cursor depth like this, all right, so now if I do a shift control X and I wanna make sure that I tap the D key so that cursor depth is on, but now if I draw a rectangle across this surface, notice what it's gonna do is it's actually only going to cut to the depth of the 3D cursor. So you can use this in order to create cuts that go to whatever depth you want using the cursor depth. All right, so we've used Carver in order to cut these openings, but we can also, if we hold the shift key, use the rebool function. What the rebool function is going to do, I'm gonna tap the D key to turn cursor depth off, is that's gonna come in here and instead of, notice how when I hold that shift key, um, it shades and it says rebool. Instead of this removing material like it was before, and the difference, if I use the rebool function, what that's gonna do is that's gonna split whoops, that's gonna split this surface off from the other surface. So if I look at this in solid mode, you can see how that's come in here and that's actually split this off. So we can use this in order to split different surfaces, which can be really helpful if you wanna come in here and like say we wanted to extrude this out to create some kind of paneling or something like that. This can be a really quick way to split off those surfaces. So you can also, when you do a shift control X, notice how when you start drawing, like this, it can kind of feel like you're stuck, right? Because you set this corner point and now you're just trying to set um, the rest of this. But say you set your first point in the wrong location, you can actually hold the Alt key in order to move that around. So when you hold the Alt key, notice how that moves. When you let up on the Alt key, you can set the size of this box. So you're no longer stuck um, just based on that one corner point because you can hold the Alt key in order to move this. So you can also get more precise by holding the Control key. So if we do a control shift X and we set our rectangle like this, if you hold down control, notice what that's going to do is that's gonna allow you to actually snap to the blender grid um, inside of blender. So when I do this, notice how that is now snapping to that grid surface. And if you adjust the grid, it's going to adjust the way that you can snap as well. But when I'm done, I can just click in order to place this. So you can use this in order to do that fast grid snapping inside of Carver as well. So one of the most underappreciated tools inside of Carver is the profile brush. So you can activate the profile brush by doing a control shift X and then tapping the B key. Well, notice how when you tap the B key, your user interface looks different. That's because it's actually going to use a shape in here in order to cut into your surface. So notice how with this one, I can tap the S key in order to scale it then I can click to move it around. I can also click and hold and drag in order to set the rotation of an object like this. So this has multiple different brushes built in. So if I tap the W key, I can toggle between these built-in brushes like this. So then once I'm done, if I like this, I can hit the space key in order to use this 
to cut into my surface. And so one thing you might have noticed here though, is it didn't cut very deep into the surface. So you can set that thickness by holding or tapping the D key right here. As Soon as you tap the D key, notice how that's gonna allow you to adjust the thickness of your cut. And then you can tap the space key in order to apply this to this surface. Notice how I can do that multiple times just by hitting the space key multiple times in here. So another cool thing about this is you can also tap the up arrow key, the up and down arrow keys in order to create arrays. So let's say that we wanted to create an array of shapes that look maybe something like this. So what I can do, I can tap that up arrow key. We'll notice how that's creating an array of those shapes. So I can tap the S key in order to scale it down. Then I can tap the up arrow key in order to keep adding instances of this like this. You can also tap the down in order to remove the instances. Then once you're done, you can just tap that space key and it's going to cut your openings just like this. So one of the things that's really helpful when you're using this profile brush is let's say that we were to activate this like this, tap the B key in order to add another one of these profiles. So let's say I wanted to add something like this, uh, maybe along the outside right here. Well, you can actually click and hold the middle mouse button in order to orbit with this active, notice how it's moving to actually match the face that you mouse over, but then you can tap the D key in order to see the depth right here. So you can also still orbit while this is active. And I wish every add-on developer would make this so that you can orbit when their tool is active because it's really frustrating when you click the middle mouse button and nothing happens. But you can use this to set if you want something to be partial depth like this, or if you want something to be full depth like this. So it's a really fast way to set up the depth in here without having to mess around with the 3D cursor or anything like that. All right, and then finally, and this blows my mind that nobody is talking about this. I haven't been able to find it in any tutorials or it's not even really very well documented, but you can actually create custom profiles for Carver. So the way that you can do that is you might've noticed inside of your preferences, there's an option in here for profile prefix. What that means is that means if you add this prefix, prefix to a shape, it's actually going to show up in your list of profiles that you can use with profile brush. So if I take, if I add carver underscore profile dash to a flat shape, then it's actually going to show up in that list. So let's say I took my U shape right here. All I need to do is I just need to rename this with carver underscore profile and then dash and hit the enter key. And so we can go ahead and we can call this U cut right here. And then let's do the same thing with this one. So we're just gonna make this one carver underscore profile dash diamond cut, which it's not really a diamond, that's okay. So now those have the proper prefix. So carver is actually going to read them. So if I do a control shift X, tap the B key, and then I can use W and X to move back and forth between the different brushes. Notice how these brushes are actually showing up as cut brushes inside of Carver. So now if I tap the D key in order to set the depth right here and then hit space, notice how I can actually use these custom shapes in order to carve into my shape. So if I hold or tap the X key right here, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hit the space, I'm gonna make sure this is all the way through. If I hit the space key, I can use my custom brushes in order to cut these openings as well. All right, so this is just one of the many great free add-ons built into Blender. I'm gonna to link to a video on this page showing you more of them. I recommend that you check it out. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.